Good evening and salutations, my Days of Alliance fans. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've done one of these, but I want to talk about Jada for a hot minute because I knew that she was going to sit there and fumble the ball. I knew it. I was surprised when she didn't screw it up when she arrested Connie. I thought she was going to, I thought that she was going to fumble the ball there. But of course, for some odd reason, she had probably one of the easiest arrests in history. This chick was in her bed. She's like, what, 70 something years old? You're telling me. During her process of arresting her, Vivian, and, you know, about to take her to jail, she decides to pick up the phone and have a little chit chat with Rafe. Like, you're not arresting a suspect. I don't know if she just underestimated her or this was just straight up stupidity. But either way, she's on the phone and Rafe is talking to her. Next minute you know, Jay's like, hey, what are you doing? And the gunshot goes off. And I'm like, this would have been the second time. Well, technically, this is like the second time that she almost got shot with her own weapon. Maybe, um, maybe you need to be doing something else with your career, because, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about her. I don't know, I don't know about her being a cop. Rafe got there, and luckily, she was able to grab the gun away from, um, Vivian. She went up knocking a, you know, she went up, like, hitting, like, the counter or something like that. One will get knocked out, and, you know, they were able to sit there and take it to the hospital. You know, Vivian, she's like, oh, this is not rage, police brutality, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. And they're just like, yeah, whatever. And then Rafe proposed to her, to Jada, and she says yes. So, okay, that's cool. I mean, you almost died today, so at this point, Ma as well. Gabby. This is, this is another reason why I decided to do a review today. Because, yeah, I was going to sit there and talk about, and I'm going to talk about this later on tonight, but... I want to do a review on it because Gabby just has a way of annoying the living shit out of me. So she walks on in, right? Like she owns the place and I guess maybe on some level. Well, she really doesn't because EJ does actually own that house, but she walks in it like it's hers and she's all like, where's stuff in that? What an attitude. So she just walks in with this level of attitude. And after she talks to EJ for a little bit, she goes upstairs. She goes upstairs and she finds a letter that um, Avant left. And EJ came in there right after. Avant was there, so he was like, you know, planting stuff and, and moving stuff around or whatever. So anyway, Stefan, I mean, Gabby finds the letter that Stefan wrote. And EJ starts to look at it He's just looking at the envelope. And Gabby's like, well, are you going to sit there and read it? And EJ's like, you know, have anyone ever told you that you're very pushy? And she's like, everyone. And I'm like, I'm just going to be completely and utterly honest. I mean, I know she's hot and everything like that, but even hot girls have their limits. Like, she's not there saying that she's pushy like that's some sort of a compliment. I'm, I'm telling you right now, men don't like that shit. I'm just going to be real honest for a minute. Men do not like that shit. We don't have the patience or the time to sit there and deal with that. Anyway, he reads the letter. And long story short, um, in this letter that Henderson or, not Henderson, Yvonne or, or, or um, Vivian wrote, Stefan's like, you know, I left town. I can't sit there and be with y'all. I mean, I can't sit there and stand inside of y'all. Gabby, isn't there saying that Gabby really broke his heart when he went up sleeping with his, you know, with his brother and everything? And that was like the ultimate act of betrayal. 
He was like, yeah, I'm done. Since y'all not going to leave, I'm going to leave. And Gabby's dumbass has the audacity to put all the blame on EJ. Since they're saying he's a user and, you know, my marriage falling apart, it's, you know, it's all your fault. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is the problem. See, this is the problem. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, man, but this is the problem with, with women like her. When they get in their feelings, they want to sit there and try to rewrite history. So she's putting all the blame on him. Mind you, it was her dumbass that wind up, um, as he so put it, crawled in her bed. I mean, crawled in his bed. Seduced him. Got with him. Wanted to sit there and do it multiple times. But somehow, her, in, in her mind, this is all his fault. And actually orders this man to sit there and leave his own house. Now, EJ has way more patience than me. Because I would have sat there and called the cops and thrown her ass right out my goddamn house. I'm like, your level of delusion had just went through the goddamn roof. Which is part of the reason why I'm doing this review. But EJ being EJ, he's like, you know, whatever, fine. And he leaves. And he talks to Chad. Now, Chad finds out from Steve that Clyde escaped, and Clyde wants to call him. Clyde has some sort of list of demands in order to get, um, in order to give him, um, Abby's body back. He doesn't tell Steve what it is, because he knows that Steve is not going to be on board with it, but he tells EJ to let Cat go. Now, while Kat and Mark are sitting there talking about um, Chad and, you know, her feeling guilty and stuff, Aaron comes in. And Aaron is just like, he's just beside himself. He's just shocked. He's like, how could you wind up doing something like this? You know, what am I going to sit there and tell Felicity? And Mark sits there and tells him why he wound up doing what he did. And Kat is like, yeah, I'm your sister. It takes him a hot minute for him to believe it. But he does want to believe in it. And the thing that's just kind of crazy is that, like, so they tell him that their mom is alive. But also tells them that, like, you know, he did it because Clyde, I kind of swore he said that Clyde actually had their mother. So when Aaron's like, okay, cool, so she's alive, can we go and see her? And Mark is like, well, the thing is, you know, Clyde is not there holding her this is the reason why we had to do what we had to do uh, to try to get her back with, with Chad. It's almost as though, like, didn't he tell, like, didn't he tell Aaron that Mom Dukes is being held hostage and this is the reason why he did what he did? So it, it was just kind of weird to me that, like, they had to sit and explain to him twice what wound up happening. Now, judging by the background, and let's just be honest, He's in Salem somewhere. And on some sort of level, maybe it's just today, seeing Clyde there was kind of a fresh breath air. But I, I do got to sit there and say, they do need a new villain. I don't know what they're doing with Orpheus. I don't know what's going on with the actor or anything like that, but they need a new villain. And not some annoying, goofy-ass villain like Connie. Like, an actual good villain. I don't care if it's a man or woman. I just need a new villain that we can sit there and get by. I don't think that's too much to ask for. I mean, clearly, we're never going to sit there and get, um... What's his name? Evan... Evan Spears or... Fears? It's clear we're not going to ever get him back. Hell, we don't even know what happened to him. But can we get somebody else? Is that too much to ask for? Anyway, I feel like that's about it. I can't think of anything else, but if I missed anything, write in the comment section. Or come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk about all the shows, Days of Our Lives, General Hospital, Bald and Beautiful, and Young and Restless. With that being said, I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next video.